Just hold on and suck in. Mommy, here's the scarlet pickles. You can take it all back to the kitchen. I won't need to buy it. Oh, yes, and you is. You was going to eat every mouthful of this. I'm not. You put on the dress, because we're late already. What my lamb going to wear? That. No, you ain't. You can't show your bosom for three o'clock. I'm going to speak to your ma about you. If you say one word, mother, I won't need a bite. And, and we are back with another episode. Smartest Guy in My Head podcast, Workhorse Media Group. Uh, listen, it is still Black History Month. And I must, I must be having way too much fun doing this because I only really had four of these scheduled, you know, to post every week throughout the month. But it's not even Valentine's Day at the time of this recording, and I'm already on uh, the third one. So uh, we're, we're blowing by this. I gotta, I gotta keep up the pace. Uh, it, but it's not just me on the channel. Uh, you guys are all over social media. You're in sending messages, text messages. And you're pulling out these little tidbits of black history here and there, and I love it. I mean, between us, we can we can get black history back to where it's supposed to be. Uh, keep it up. I see. Uh, but getting on with this video, like, share, subscribe, or do that. Do that for me. Like, share, subscribe, comment, engage, and we'll keep this thing going. But getting on to the video, um, I call myself a movie buff. A little bit. I enjoy watching movies. And it wouldn't be right if I didn't have a video honoring the first black person to take home an Oscar, which is Hattie McDaniel. Now, Hattie McDaniel won the Best Supporting Actress Oscar uh, for her role in the 1939 film, classic film, uh, Gone with the Wind. She played Mammy, who was the maid, or more appropriately, the house slave, to Scarlett and her family. And she was pretty much the comic relief, but she did a really good job in there. And, you know, the Academy thought so, which is why she won the Oscar. Now, mind you, she won the Oscar in 1940. So it was still that time, Hattie McDaniel, being a black woman in a largely uh, white area in Hollywood, she wasn't even able to attend the premiere of Gone with the Wind because it was premiered in a whites-only studio. Couldn't attend. A movie that she would later go on to win an award for, she couldn't be a part of the premiere. And even at the award ceremony, at the Academy Awards, Hattie McDaniel had to sit off to the side. They let her in, but she had to sit off to the side in a segregated area because uh, she couldn't sit with her white cast and, and crew members and counterparts. It's kind of sad. Um, and not only did throughout her her career she garner she had to deal with segregation and garner criticism from white people. She also was criticized by black people. Can you believe that? Especially like the NAACP, they were all over Hattie McDaniel because uh, prior to 1939 and her role in Gone with the Wind, she had acted in I don't know more than 60 roles in movies and probably a, a handful she was only credited for. But she had acted in, I don't know, probably 60 or more films and, well, hang on. Maybe this will kind of get the NAACP's point across. In 1932, she acted in a film called The Washington Masquerade and her role was a maid. Same year, she acted in The Boiling Point. Her role, Caroline the Cook. Same year, she acted in Crooner. Her role, Maid in Ladies' Room. Same year, Blonde Venus. Her role, Cora. Helen's Maid in New Orleans. You kind of get where they're going with this? The NAACP's point was that the roles that had McDaniel had taken largely could not have contributed positively to what white people in Hollywood thought that black people were capable of in cinema. She just took roles of, of those 60 plus roles she had before Gone with the Wind, at least 23 of them were that of the help, like or of a maid or of a cook. And those are the ones that had the description in the title. 
she could have been named in those other movies and still played the maid. You know what I mean? So the NAACP's point is that you are not furthering what black people can do in Hollywood by only playing uneducated uh, slaves or maids or help type characters. And I kind of have to agree. They have a point. Uh, but this isn't a Hattie McDaniel slander piece. So I have to tell you the other side of the story. And and Hattie McDaniel, she's quoted as saying, why should I be mad about making $700 a week to play a maid? If I didn't, I'd be making $7 a week being one. And that's true. If she wasn't, if she wasn't taking these roles, she'd probably be being a maid for real and making significantly less money. And my question to those that question her is if, if they were in that position to make that kind of money back in the 1940s and 1930s, what would they have done? $700 a week in 1939 is a lot of money. I know $700 a week right now set a couple of folks straight, be good. So I'm just, just, I'm just gonna lay off of it. Hattie McDaniel, <laughs> the first black person to take home an Oscar. She, for all her faults, paved the way to let black people in and get black people recognized for their contributions to movies and cinema. Before I get out of here, just a little interesting things to know. The next black person to win an Oscar wouldn't come until 23 years later, well after after Hattie McDaniel's death. Sidney Poitier would win the Best Actor Award in 1963 for his role in Lilies in the Field. Uh, the next woman that won an Oscar wouldn't come until 1990 when Whoopi Goldberg won it for her role in Ghost. And Halle Berry is the one and only black woman to win an Oscar in a leading role for her role in Monsters Ball. So, you see how that goes. A lot of black women, coincidentally, have won and have been nominated for uh, Best Supporting roles, but not Halle Berry is the only one that's won in uh, the leading role. But that's neither here nor there. Hattie McDaniel paved the way. She's a trailblazer in black film, in Hollywood, for black people in film in Hollywood. So, uh, go read up on her. It's, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, I got to get out of here. That's my time. This has been Smart Guy in My Head Podcast, Workhorse Media Group. Got my shirt on. I like the shirt. You like the shirt? If you like the shirt, comment below. and We'll see if we can get these in circulation. Um, that's it. Stay tuned.